Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Kinex Robot Build Series. Let's build Season 2. This is Episode 7, and this will probably end up being the last episode unless something happens that is unexpected and I have to have a little bit in the next episode. Where we left off, I had just finished replicating these towers and putting the tape on, and I ran a quick test. And there were some issues with it. The main one is that the motors were all going different speeds, which means that the tapes will not stay synchronized, which is really important in a robot. So what I'm going to have to do is make one motor operate all three of these. Right now you can see I have it linked up like that. So the motor used to go in that spot there, and now a rod will just come up, and same for all the others and some chain will link them all together and the motor will be right here and I might have to use two motors and combine them but I'll go over that later. The other problem is these reed heads for the second and third joints weren't really operating correctly. Sometimes they would be in that position and then a pin over there that was supposed to switch it back was not doing that. And I'm not really sure why that was happening, but for this one I've rearranged it as you can see here. The old one looked like that for comparison. And I tested this out uh, just a few minutes ago and it works a lot better now. I guess I could just show that real quick. that is moving as expected. And this is how I have the rod hook up to the transmission right now. It might be hard to see, but that's the perfect length for making it balanced. Here's what I have to link up all three of the inputs. It's just a chain that goes around a series of gears, and this one in the middle is the main one, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but there it is there. Right now I have this rod extended upwards, but I'll probably be able to just have a gear right here going to the next part, which I will explain in a minute. I know this whole thing looks kind of bulky just because it's so big and it's on top of all the other stuff, but this is really the only way to link up these three inputs without making a drastic change. If I was to do it over again, I would probably make all this stuff be below everything, but of course right now it would have to be everything would have to be raised off the floor and I really don't want to have to do that. So I think this is a fine alternative and it's really strong just because of these frame supports right here. I also finished changing all of the reed heads to be the same. Now let's explain this motor area. I would just have one motor on it, kind of like that, but that one motor would have to power not only these three storage towers, but the entire robot. And I don't think that would be enough torque to do what it needs to do so what I'll probably do is combine two motors and make them both control that rod and I'm going to do that with a differential. We can't have two motors connected to the same rod since they move at different speeds and that would cause the rod to eventually be twisted and break really after a while. So what I will do instead is hook it, the motors up to a differential, one on each side so one over there and one over there. And that means that if the motors are different speeds it won't matter because it'll just turn the middle like that. And when both motors are going at the same time, this right here, the gear connected to the actual differential will be what is connected to that rod. And that will enable these two motors to power the same input, or in this case the output of this. The differential and the motors are hooked up. 
right now these motors actually move in opposite directions so that isn't what I want so I'll have to get a different one but I just wanted to show them like this to demonstrate um, just how this differential thing works so if I only plug in one of these motors this chain right here is actually moving at half the speed as the motor and that's a perfect one to two ratio if this motor was the same direction as this one, then this would start spinning um, twice as fast, and that's how it's going to work. But if it is in the opposite direction, then the differential seems to stay in place, but what it's actually doing is it's slowly drifting this way. It might be hard to tell on the video. But that just means these motors are moving at different speeds, and I can also force it to move faster like that. And that just means that a torque that I'm applying to this motor or that motor is making the speed change even more. So that is why we need to have this system in the first place. I have replaced the other motor, so let's see what it looks like when it's running at full speed. So this speed right here is pretty much what it was previously going at when it had three separate motors. I'm actually not going to test out the actual tapes right now. I have everything in programming mode, so that's why they haven't been running. We are almost ready to hook the actual robot up to the system and get the whole thing running. But before we do that, we do have one small system to add, which will be the last thing to build really besides the paneling and that is a tape difference gauge. Now what do I mean by that? With the motors the way they are, since all of these are hooked up, they will always stay synchronized when the robot is running. However, what about when it's in write mode, like it is right now? All of these cranks are separate, and I originally wanted it like that just because it'll make programming easier. However, that means, say you program the first joint and the second joint, and then the third one doesn't have to do anything. If those tapes go around just a little bit and you don't do anything to the third tape, then that means this one is out of sync with the others. So that means even if a joint doesn't move, the tape still has to be running the same distance as the other two. In order to make sure that they're all synchronized, then I'll need to place near the top some differentials, one in between each tower, and that will let you know the difference between the tapes that are on the edges. So it'll have one between there and there, and there and there. Once again, we are going to use differentials to perform this. So let's say the tapes are hooked up to this side and that side. So if the tape over here moves, say, 180 degrees, like that, we know that the differential just moved up a little bit. In order to make it move back down, this side has to move 180 degrees in that direction. So now it's back to where it started. That way we can find out the difference between these two inputs. So if one of them turns a lot and the other one stays stationary, then this, however many times this one turned around, is the difference between the two. And this one has to turn back however much this one turned to get it back to the beginning. And what I'll have is on this gear here there will be a loop of chain and that will have an indicator so when this differential is spinning it will have a rod that is going up like that and at the default position it will be at zero so it will be like that and then when it starts spinning it will start drifting downwards and you will know that the two tapes are unsynchronized. I've taken the back corners off from the towers and here it is on the ground. So we have two differentials, one in between each tower. And I guess I will show one of them. So if I turn these gears at the same speed, the differential will stay in the same position. 
and it's kind of hard to do it by hand but you can see it there and I decided to use black gears right here instead of regular gears just because I'm running out of them and this also uses less space so I think that will be a lot better and the other side is similar this right here and right here are different because these two shafts on each side of the differential have to move in opposite directions so this side needs to have an even number of gears and this side an odd number of gears to make that happen the tape difference gauges are finished let's get a better view of the differentials near the back. There are two strands of micro chain coming out and the reason they go out this far instead of just ending right there is because I plan on having a panel behind it like that so you will always be able to see this. I would show it moving right now but the tapes are currently locked so we will do that later and I'll also put a piece on the chain so that we know which level it's at. We are almost ready to attach the robot arm to the control system, but before I do that I'm going to make some minor changes. I've gotten some paneling finished just before I attach the robot arm because it would be hard to get in here otherwise. The main paneling is at the control panel and this is pretty much the finished surface for that. I wanted this to look really nice just because this is the main place where you go to push levers and stuff. So that's why this paneling is really dense. The paneling for the rest of it will probably be more like this right here. And I have this for the chain that goes back and I also put the chain in. So you can see that going back there. I also have this paneling here which is really just a cage because you can still see a lot of stuff underneath. But I did that just because this area won't really be noticeable when the robot arm is attached and it'll still allow me to see what's going on underneath. But it still gives a nice finished look to it. The robot arm is officially hooked up to the rest of the system, so now it is first to run our first real program. I'll make it short though, just so it doesn't take too much time. Right here on the control panel, these are just temporary, but they tell me which way the robot joint will go. So this one is for the second joint, that's why they um, are rotating. And the others, this is the first joint, so that arrow means it's going that way. And for the third joint, which is over here, the arrow going up means that the joint will go upwards. I have also lined up the tapes, and it might be kind of hard to see, but that's the tape difference gauge, so that means that the tapes are synchronized and when I start programming it, that will go either up or down depending on which way I crank it. I'm not actually going to film me programming it because I've already shown that, so I will come back when the robot can actually be run. Unfortunately, we aren't going to see it work because the motors do not have enough torque to turn both the tape and power the robot at the same time and even when I just do it by hand it doesn't really seem difficult to do but for some reason when all of those forces are added up it just doesn't work at all and it's not even like the differentials breaking or anything it's that the motors will, will literally just stop running and so I can't really do anything about that wait a minute where did the tape go Honestly, I started to take this thing apart just because it didn't work and you can see that I started to take the paneling off and the tape is right there. But I don't think we should give up on it just yet. I think I will at least try to add two more motors onto this system and that means it's going to need three d differentials. So hopefully I will have enough gears to finish all of it because I am running out like I said earlier. But hopefully, when I have four motors here, it will be able to power everything. Here are all four of the motors hooked up, and I will show it running really quick. So all these differentials are moving at the same speed. 
And this one right here is really big because I wanted it to be extra strong. There's not really much need to explain this because it basically works just like the last one did except there are just more differentials hooked up. The output of these outer ones is hooked up to the input of the main differential and it is pretty much mirror imaged. I've also decided to make a little conduit for all of the wires just because they were getting tangled up so that just goes back there and comes out right there. Next, I need to fix this paneling because since I changed this whole area, it'll have to be a little bit different. And I'm also going to put the tape back on and hook the robot up like it used to be. And we will come back and test it. Everything is attached once again and the tapes are also synchronized. Right now I have the transmission set to go in a certain direction. So let's just test this out and see if this robot arm actually moves. It will move either in that direction or that direction. I'm not really sure which one yet. Okay, so it's going this direction and it had enough torque to do that. Let's try that again. Okay, I kind of hear some grinding in there so I'll have to fix that. But that did work better than the last time. Because last time it didn't even move at all. Before I fix that gearing, I don't think I have shown if the tape difference gauge is actually working as I'm programming. So let's crank this tape over here. And we can see that the yellow marker is going down from the white rod. Like that. And so we know that this tape right there is out of sync with the other two. So to get it back into sync, we will have to turn the second tape. So you can see the marker coming back up. And we line it up with the white rod. And now those two tapes are synchronized. However, when I cranked that one, this one over here became out of sync. And it is up there. So when I start going the uh, start doing the first joint or the third joint, it will go back down to the white rod and now all the tapes are synchronized. So that's just a demonstration of that part working. Another thing I should mention is there are some pins on the tape that are black and there are 11 of them and they are right before the start of the program right there. And those signify that you shouldn't write any program in that area. And that's just because the erase head needs room to clamp onto the tape down near the bottom. And it can't clamp when a pin is in either direction. So they have to be in neutral. So if you never write a program for that section, then the erase modules will always be able to activate. I have fixed the gears down there, so hopefully everything works better. I just kind of had to space everything differently. What I've done now is I've put some tape, or some of the pins in the back. So I'm going to watch the robot go this way, and then I'm going to stop the lever when it gets to the other side. Then I will know how long the robot takes to get from there to there, and how long the tape will have to be for the, just to go from one side to the other. So let's see if this works. Even with four motors, it's just too much torque to control this whole thing. So I think the best course of action to take would be to totally redesign the robot arm and make it to where it's not a huge and heavy carriage that slides across because that was just not working out very well. So what I'm probably going to do is take this whole thing apart and leave the arm part right there. We are about at the 20 minutes mark for this episode so I think that will be about it for now. I'll have to come back 
in the next episode, and hopefully that will be the final one. But you never know what problems what you will encounter, so there might be episodes even after that. What I plan on doing is, like I said, changing the robot arm to be different and be easier to move, and I kind of want to revisit the very first design that I did that had the first joint rotating instead of sliding across the track. I think that would be a lot easier for the motors to handle, and I kind of have an idea of how to make it more stable as well. So hopefully I will be able to do that. The only thing about that idea is, is it will probably take up more room than this did. This thing just goes across here, but that, or the new idea will probably go out here. So I might not even have the space to do that, and it probably wouldn't rotate 360 degrees either, just because of not having enough room. So I might have to postpone this project just because of running out of space, and I will hopefully be moving to a new building space soon, but that could be within the next month or two or three months, so I'm not really sure how long I will have to postpone it. However, I will try to see what I can come up with, and I will keep you guys posted with the progress and if I'll have to postpone this project or not, or maybe even give up on it if it doesn't work out. I'm not really sure yet. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.